Today I'll be showing you how I organized my art supplies on my new crafting table, upcycling my old spice rack and some glass jars. Welcome back to DIY No Need to Cry with Eva Lise. Hi, my crafty fam. And if you're new to my channel, welcome. If you've been a crafty member for a while, then you've probably seen these before. These are the very first art supply organizers I made when I started the channel. I remember how excited I was when I first made them. And although they will always be nostalgic to me, it was time for an upgrade. As you see, some of these are pretty beat up because I never sealed them. I'll be using all new glass jars with wider rims except for this one. This one will get a makeover because it's the perfect size for my pouncer brushes. Let's get started. For this next design, I'll be using this glass jar I got from my friend. I believe it's a yolk plate yogurt jar. I love the shape, and it's the perfect size to store my crafting toothpicks and cotton swabs. Using a toothpick, for no other reason than it being right in front of me, <laughs> I applied the glue in the form of drips. I wanted these drips to be more intentional. That's why I didn't do it the same way as the first jar. That's also why I used the Mod Podge glue instead of the Elmer's, because that one tends to be a little more runny. It's pretty self-explanatory. The only tip I have to create this look is to make sure the drips don't connect. Once it was completely dry, brush it off and get rid of all the loose glitter. I love how it came out. It's so pretty. Next, I'm gonna hot glue this cap I got from my body spray bottle into the middle of the jar. I did this so my toothpicks and cotton swabs don't get all mixed up. All that's left is to fill it. Perfect. This is the container I was keeping them in. My friend Sade made it for me years ago. And as much as I love it, I needed one to match my new color scheme. So I made another one keeping the drip style. Now it's time to get dirty. For this next jar, I wanted a marbly, sparkly, geoid type of vibe to it. So I decided to try a dirty pour and I ain't mad at how they came out. I poured a little bit of each color I wanted into the jars. I then added some Floetrol to each one and mixed them well. I think it's called Floetrol because that's what it does, makes things flow. <laughs> Next, I added one drop of 3-in-1 silicone into the white paint only. This causes cells to form. Lastly, pour each color into one jar and now we're ready to pour. I put my jar inside a plastic container with something inside so the jar does not touch the bottom of the container. That darn glue finally came in handy. <laughs> If you know, you know. You want the excess paint to be able to drip off without accumulating at the rim. Now comes the fun part. I poured the paint in a swirling motion over the top and watched the magic happen. I 
ended up adding loose glitter while it was drying on parts I didn't like so much. I also added more glitter here and there after it was fully dried. Once I achieved the look I was going for, I sealed it with Mod Podge. I love how these came out. Oh, and it's so much fun. You guys have got to try this. For the next jar, we're going to do a good old fashioned decoupage. I took a paper napkin and cut out all the roses I thought I would like. Once I had the ones I wanted, I trimmed them. Then I removed all the plies of paper. Do the same to the rest and now it's time to prep the jar, we'll be decorating. This candle jar has seen better days and desperately needs a makeover. But first, I need to take off this old paint. There, much better. Once it was clean and completely dry, using a pouncer brush, I painted the whole thing with white matte acrylic paint. This will be the final color on this jar, so I gave it one more coat after the first one dried. Now it's ready for the flowers. I spread some Mod Podge on the spot I was placing my rose. Placed the rose and gently pressed it down. Don't come for me. I know I should have used some plastic cling wrap to smooth it down, but I couldn't find mine, so I used my fingers. <laughs> I don't suggest you do this if you're new to decoupage. You want to use a piece of crumpled up cling wrap to smooth it out. Once it was completely smooth, I sealed it by giving it another coat of Mod Podge. I then took the excess off while it was wet. Again, that's something you don't want to do if this is your first go at it. Wait until it's completely dry to remove the excess. I continued this process all around the jar until the bottom half was covered. As you see, I didn't place them all at the same height. I wanted them to have that uneven look. Once it was dry, I touched up any spots before sealing the entire jar. Using a brush and some glue, I detailed all the roses with glitter. I placed glue on the rim and glittered that as well. Finally, brush off all the excess glitter and to make sure the glitter doesn't fall out, I spray it with hairspray. It's light, dries fast, and it works. I know I made them, but I really love how this set turned out. Each container has its own unique look, but they all match perfectly. These are simple yet elegant looking. They're exactly what I wanted. Just like the first two I made, these were super fun and super easy to make. If you haven't seen those yet, click here to watch. That's five down and two more to go. And my set is complete. Remember, you can customize them to your liking. Just don't forget to have fun, be creative, and make a mess. Thanks for watching! If you enjoyed this video, please don't forget to thumbs it up as it helps the growth of the channel and to show your support. If you're new to my channel, I hope you consider subscribing to get updates on future videos. And remember, do it yourself. There's no need to cry.